we're not saying that the mother or the outward appearance is not part of the deen. Yeah. That's uh, that, that that's incorrect. Like some people tell you, oh, it's all about what's in your heart. It's all about character. Mm. No, no, no that, that's incorrect as well. Yeah. But the deen is very, is multifaceted. Alhamdulillah wa salatu salam ala rasulillah ama ba'd Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu And welcome back to Beyond the Member podcast I am your host Muhammad Basaeed And today I am joined with a special guest Who's joined us from America, Minnesota Sheikh Abdullahi Bihi Assalamu alaikum Sheikh, you okay? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa How you doing my brother? I'm great, barakallah Barak, sakayyib Alhamdulillah Shirna Alhamdulillah Allah yifikna wa iyaak Alhamdulillah, iyaak, habibi Shukran, alhamdulillah This whole... Um, Word, you know, practicing, yeah. yeah, and also people who begin practicing who mm. may not have been practicing mm. before. I want to have a discussion with you regards that. Mm. And I told you before we start the podcast, yeah. it's kind of a topic that's quite dear to me. Mm. You know, I'm not going to say why, but it is quite dear to me. This, yeah. this topic, you know, yeah. and at the message, we do a lot of stuff for the youth. And mm. I know you back in Minnesota, you guys do a lot of stuff for the youth over yeah. there as well, yeah. you know, um, whether it's incorporating, you know, uh, sports or, or different things to get them to be closer to the dean. So what I want to ask you first and foremost, this word practicing, when someone says that brother is practicing mm. or that sister is practicing, mm. what does that mean? It's a good question. <laughs> I think practicing that whole word, mm. is it an Islamic term? Is it something that we're supposed to use? Mm. You know, it's more secular than it is Islamic. Okay. All right. Now it's becoming common. Like that's how we differentiate between people. Yeah. But in essence, what is secularism? Separation between church and state? Separation between life and religion? Yeah. So practicing are those who actually practice the religion and those who don't practice, they're just focusing on life. Yeah. Separation between science and religion? Yeah. You're a Muslim or you're not. Yeah. Now there's different levels of Islam. There's Muslim, Mu'min, Muhsin. Yeah. Uh, you know, but at the end of the day, we all have to pray. We all have to fast. We have to, you know, we have to do these obligations. Mm. So the whole essence of practicing is a, you know, uh, there was a time in the Muslim Ummah where la it wasn't even unthinkable. It was unthinkable for a person not to pray. Not to pray, yeah. You see some of the books in fiqh just a few hundred years ago. Yeah. It's not, it's not even like somebody who doesn't pray. It's not even, it was a, it was a issue when they discuss in the books of fiqh that was in theory, yeah, but in practice you won't see that. So, the whole word is problematic from that perspective. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but now that it has become so common, right? And that's just the word that we use uh, for somebody who tries to practice the religion. In reality, when we say practicing, we only look at one aspect, and that is the mother. The mother, how the person looks. If, you know, he has a beard. Yeah. You know, she's wearing a niqab. Yeah, yeah. He has yeah. the thobe on. Yeah, yeah, you know that person. That person's practicing. Yeah. Now, we're not saying that the mother or the outward appearance is not part of the deen. Yeah. That's uh, that, that that's incorrect. Like some people tell you, oh, it's all about what's in your heart. It's all about character. Mm. No, no, no. That, that's incorrect as well. Yeah. But the deen is very, is multifaceted. The deen is not one aspect. Yeah. When we say somebody who's quote unquote practicing Islam. Mm. Right. If we accept the word, if we for the sake it, of argument, yeah. but like we said, we're not supposed to accept it, but due to circumstances and situation, if we accept it, it's a person who has embodies great character, yeah. somebody who uh, has ishtihad, very prudent on his worship, yeah. somebody who uh, is a regular visitor of the masjid, yeah. somebody who seeks knowledge, somebody who tries his best to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has good dealings with the people. This is Islam. In a nutshell, all of these matters put together. Yeah. And it's not just how you look. Mm. And it's not about just your creed yeah. and what you believe. Yeah. That's a big part of it. Mm -hmm. But it's not the only thing. Mm. There's so many other things that go on. But that doesn't mean that we put one part of Islam over the other. Some may be more important. Yeah. But that doesn't mean we do ihmal of the of the others. Yeah. yeah. You know? So that I, that in itself, you know, um it's 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 something that maybe not a lot of people look at. Mm. You know the whole the whole picture, mm. just certain aspects, just pick and choose really mm. what they see in a person, mm. and then to be labeled as practicing. You know, because for me, even that word practicing, as you mentioned, 
there's levels to it, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and it's how someone is like, like you mentioned, Ihsan, Islam, you know, Iman. It, but people see practicing as he prays and the outward appearance, like you mentioned, you know, and uh, what, I, what in this discussion, new newly practicing people, you know, who I wanted to focus on, mm-hmm. you know, people who recently, you know, Allah mm-hmm. gave them guidance, mm-hmm. you know, those people, you know, because um, th- it's, it's hard to put people in just one category when yes. you say practicing. Mm-hmm. You know, so those newly practicing people, you know, those people who recently started to perform mm. the acts of worship and, mm. and start to embody what Islam actually means, mm. sometimes it can be a new world for them. Mm. You know, because they're leaving, you know, as they say, jahiliya. Mm. You know, they're leaving ignorance and they're coming mm. to Islam. Mm. What do you prioritize? Because you mentioned a lot of things when you said, you know, yes. about Islam. You know, and it's like a bigger piece. But when you first start to, you know, quote unquote practice. Mm. How do you prioritize? What do you do? You know, because what uh, my main thing is to the viewers who are watching is someone who maybe just started the deen or just whether they're reva or not, whether they were born Muslim and all their life they lived a different kind of, you know, mm-hmm. uh, they didn't, they weren't quote, quote practicing. Mm-hmm. And, and this, I know this word is going to be dropped a lot in this, in yeah, this uh, podcast, yeah. Yeah. but um, what, what, how do we prioritize? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a very good question because a lot of people, they, go too quick about up the ladder yeah. they burn out or you know uh so it's very important that a person goes through a system uh and there's tadarraj there's levels to this yeah. right and that can only be found in the form of a guide a mentor and a teacher mm. uh so that's where that's where it all starts mm. you have a teacher you have a, a mentor you have a guide somebody who embodies many different qualities, somebody who has different qualities, uh, such as character, such as knowledge, such as ibadah, mm. you know, all of these things put together. And you can kind of tell, you know, the difference of, it's not just about somebody who, who speaks or somebody who gives da'wah, that's not enough. So somebody who, and it was somebody who has wisdom, somebody who's older in age, not somebody who's closer to you. Yeah. You try to find that, I think that's, that's very important. And then he will tell you what to do. Mm-hmm. People have weaknesses in different areas. People have, you know, uh, strengths in different areas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given talents to different people, you know. And Imam Malik, he describes it as rizq. When he was asked, uh, some people, they, were, uh, they asked Imam Malik, he doesn't have the same level of worship as some of the other scholars or some of the other pious people. So he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives rizq to whom he wishes. So, هذا يفتح له في باب العلم. This person, in terms of knowledge, Allah opens up. And in, in fasting, in sadaqa, mm-hmm. in salah. Mm-hmm. Everybody has, you know, but that doesn't mean you're uh, below average yeah. in, in, in these matters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're still up to par with it, but you may not be elite. Yes. You know? Yeah. Uh, so I think one of the most important things for somebody who starts getting involved in the deen more is to look at their heart. Is to flush out all of the diseases of the heart. Hmm. That's something that's very important. Take out the envy yeah. and the hasad and the kibir. Hmm. Try to be sincere. Hmm. A lot of people, they enter it via hype or they enter it, you know, being unsincere. Hmm. And some may be sincere, hmm. but flushing out the diseases of the heart yeah. And focusing on yourself, right? Yeah. Improving yourself. Doing tahqir, belittling oneself. That's something that's very important. And ibadah, worship, especially salah, mm-hmm. to focus on that. Uh, and then knowledge mm-hmm. in that order. Uh, and we can see this in the seerah of the Prophet. You know, when the wahi came down, revelation came down. Uh, Qiyam al-Layl was obligatory for one year. Because the Sahaba, the Prophet ﷺ wanted to teach the Sahaba the importance of praying, right? To sacrifice your entire night for this religion. Right? So it shows you the importance of prayer, the importance of worship. Having that spiritual connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you in the long run. Yeah. But from the get-go, if you're, 
because sometimes what happens is a person is told a he becomes practicing the next day pick up a book yeah all right which is not necessarily bad Mm -hmm. it's good for the person to learn but what is important is for them to uh do this side by side very Mm -hmm. bad they're just get to nafs very important because that will give them longevity that will motivate them to yeah. continue on the path of knowledge and that's why you see many people they you know they start seeking knowledge yeah. a year two years and they fall off and the seeking knowledge became a revolving door mm. you know in and so out they're in and out yeah one person comes like <laughs> replacing yeah you know it's like a job at a warehouse you know <laughs> <laughs> just keep switching or a waiter at a restaurant <laughs> you know what i mean so and that's because they didn't they didn't think about they didn't look at this as a life project or a project of the afterlife subhanallah because they never had the spiritual connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you got to start that from day one yeah and that starts with by doing ibadah yeah by showing because that's why we created asl yeah ibadah very important if you look at all of the prophets this is what their message was yeah and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah uh, right with the condition that is Uh, the condition of Tawheed, oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sah. Wa ila adin akhahum huda. Qala ya qawmi ibudullah. Yeah. Right? Wa ila thamud akhahum. Ah. Wa ila madyana akhahum shu'ayba. Wa ila thamud akhahum salih. Salih. Right? Qala ya qawmi ibudullah. Qala ya qawmi ibudullah. Worship Allah. Worship Allah. Yeah. This is very important. Sah. Knowledge is a big part of that, but it's not the only thing. Mm. Salah, siyam. You know, it's... Uh, And, and and you know what it's it's um it's a journey you mm-hmm. know and the thing about it with any kind of journey that you're mm-hmm. taking mm-hmm. there's what there's ups and there's yeah. downs mm-hmm. you know and and it's to to know how to ride that wave you know and yeah. not get lost mm-hmm. you know and um the why even f- i've found you know from from ex- from speaking to brothers mm-hmm. you know about um consistency you know being consistent and then obviously you know from the from the hadith of the prophet sallam to be consistent even in something that's small you know so how do we balance you know because you end up with problems you know because you end you 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 like you said you enter with a hype or you have so much zeal and you end up end up over exaggerate over like so much energy in the beginning you don't realize this is a marathon and it's not a sprint mm-hmm. you know sort of like ramadan but in life you know mm-hmm. subhanallah and um and you end up doing that or there's that whole situation where you cut yourself off from the world completely mm-hmm. this whole misunderstanding of zuhud mm-hmm. you know how you can misunderstand zuhud and uh and then also once like we said when we were talking about um being consistent right right in the wave not knowing how to handle low iman mm-hmm. You know how do how do we like there's like so many so many aspects that you may not necessarily be mm-hmm. be ready to deal with mm-hmm. you know how how do you deal with that and i think um maybe it goes back to what you're saying about the guide mm-hmm. you know that's a very interesting question it's a loaded question <laughs> you know there's so many different you know, angles yeah <laughs> uh but uh mashallah it's beautiful though it's beautiful guys a it's a great analysis because that's something we see all the time yeah um it's natural for a human being to have a lot of zeal whenever they're going into something yeah if they enter something new yeah right if you enter the world of cryptocurrency you see people <laughs> they're addicted man they're checking that app every every other hour yeah, subhanallah right yeah uh you enter the the alam of sports mm. now you just become addicted the alam of movies you start binge watching yeah yeah the prophet sallam he tells li kulli amalin shirra wa li kulli shirratin fatra Everything mm-hmm. that you do, there's a high zeal for it, mm-hmm. but that zeal will end. But just like a marathon, you start fast, but then you, you, you might be 10 out of 10 the first, you know, mm-hmm. couple minutes, and after that you just stay around eight yeah. or nine. Yeah. So how do you stay around eight or nine? Mm-hmm. You're still high, maybe not the same as the beginning. Yeah. Sometimes you might go at 10. The human beings, you know, Iman goes up, Iman goes down. That's very natural. But how do you stay in the high upper echelon of Iman and faith? And obviously you answered one of them is that a guide you know a yeah. guide will keep you in check yeah because as human beings you know if we're by ourselves we might fall off the road but if we have someone yeah uh you know keeping us in check that's very important and this was something uh, you know in the muslim ummah that we had for a long time up until recently when we started learning about independence and individualism and we learned in these western countries that everybody started to do their own thing 
Mm. All right. And they didn't care about having a teacher, maybe self taught people, you know? Uh, and this is what universities and academia, this is what it promotes. Yeah. Although there's very much benefit in those, but one of the, you could say one of them, a facet that has come with it is many self taught people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, but what keeps a person uh, going, right? Is their connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. And that all starts with your heart, like we said. Yeah. If your heart, from the very beginning, you take out the the diseases and you replace it mm -hmm. with tawakkul, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you complement that with ibadah, mm -hmm. even if it's something small, and you start becoming consistent in it, even if it's small, that will help you in the long run. Yeah. On top of that, I want to add to that, is knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, many people might say, oh, well, that's what everybody says, and we don't see it. Mm. The knowledge you're not learning is not knowledge. A lot of the people who say seeking knowledge, they don't seek knowledge. It's seeking knowledge is not something, it's not reading a small book, you know, that's translated, mm -hmm. that's very, very simple. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's very simple. That's multiplication. That's addition. That's one plus one. <laughs> Seeking knowledge is like, you know, if we want to compare it to mathematics, it's like calculus, yeah. right? Derivatives and all this. Yeah. That's real knowledge, like physics and biology, and, yeah. you know, the, just to do taqrib. Yeah. All right? So you got to be, if you want to really seek knowledge, this will fortify your base. And this will keep you in the long run. Mm. And, and, and that's what we see that's missing. Yeah. Knowledge is just you going to a bunch of lectures, you're going around just, you know, doing different stuff. That's not real knowledge. Real knowledge is picking up the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, memorizing a portion of it, trying to understand the Quran, right? M seeking knowledge is learning Arabic. Mm -hmm. and learning Arabic is not just learning uh, vocabs, yeah. all right? Learning Arabic includes learning nahu and sarf and yeah. balagha. Many people who learn these, they, they start with the first book, they never end up going back because they don't like the science. Yeah. And then they're like, you know what? I'm not going to look into this field. I'm going to look into aqidah or tafsir. Way to understand aqidah and tafsir hadith, you need Arabic. Yeah. And, and, and the concept of ulum al ala the assistant disciplines, like usul al-fiqh and, and mantiq and mustalah uh, al-hadith uh, and nahu, sarf, balagha, adab, fiqh al all these ulum put together, these are needed for you to understand the Quran and the Sunnah properly to understand fiqh and aqidah properly, yeah. all right? Uh, so the knowledge that people, that we see here in the Western country is not real knowledge. Mm. Real knowledge means you gotta lock yourself in a room and memorize. Yeah. It means you gotta have a sheikh. Yeah. They used to say, قُلْ لِي مَنْ شَيْخُكْ أَقُولُ لَكَ مَنْ أَنْتَ Tell me who your sheikh is and I'll tell you who is. Yeah. Don't tell me your sheikh is some sheikh who visits once every one, you know? Yeah. Uh, don't tell me your sheikh is someone that you go to once a week or once every two weeks. Yeah. I'm talking about like something more on a consistent daily basis. Yeah, yeah. That That's your real sheikh. And then uh, you got to read. See, knowledge is not something that's easy. Yeah. Now, not everybody can be full-time. Yeah. But even the part-time, I mean, if you have 24 hours in the day, you dedicate one hour, you can get a lot of the stuff done in one hour. Yeah, mashallah. So knowledge really fortifies your base and gives you longevity. Mm. Uh, Ibn Abbas, عنه, he mentions this, and everybody, Ibn Majah, it's been narrated, it's been attributed to the Prophet Sallallahu <laughs> uh, One of the statements of Ibn Abbas, he says, فَقِيهٌ واحد أشد على الشيطان من ألف عابد. One scholar is strong against the shaitan from 1,000 worshippers. So, shaitan, how do you keep him at bay? How do you keep him further from you? What's important is knowledge. Yeah. But knowledge not by itself, as we mentioned. Knowledge complemented with ibadah, yeah. complemented with Tazkiyah uh, to Nufus yeah. and also having a guide all of these things put together yeah. will help a person uh, be a marathon runner not a not a sprinter, not, not a sprinter. <laughs> you know a lot of us we go in with the sprinter mentality yeah. many people ask how can I become a scholar in two years <laughs> or how can I finish Arabic in six months crash course crash course <laughs> instant gratification <laughs> quick 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 yeah. you know just like fast food our yeah. lives are quick 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 yeah, now we don't even pay cash we, can't, we don't even have enough time to get change back we just tap <laughs> that's it <laughs> tap everything's quick you know what I mean yeah. so uh, that life becomes uh, we look at knowledge the same way when in reality knowledge is 
وطول زماني الشافعي ساس اخي ساس لن تنال العلم الا بستة سوى بك عن تفصيلها ببيان ذكاء وحرص واجتهاد وبلغه وصحبه استاذ وطول زماني having a صحبه باستاذ صحبه باستاذ ولا زعيم friendship yeah. yeah mentorship from a teacher وطول زماني long time there's no such thing as a year two years yeah. and when they say طول زماني they don't mean 20 years of on and off Yeah, fifteen years of part time. They actually mean like <laughs> they mean full time. Yeah, but obviously you know that's not really practical for us to be full time, except for maybe some younger people or people who have that ability. Yeah, but even then, like for you, if you want to become a scholar, yeah, it took a full time for a long time. Yeah, yeah. So. And you know when you mention uh, the, the seeking knowledge. Mm-hmm. You know, um, f- like of course, when uh, we mentioned when people first start practicing, and then they come sometimes through this door, mm-hmm. and we mentioned obviously that you mentioned that saying that you test nafs, right? You look at your heart, you start increasing your ibadah, you make you building this connection of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that you never had in the beginning. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you, mm-hmm. that's what you want to do to get close to your Creator, mm-hmm. right? So knowledge will help you do that, right? Mm-hmm. But then, of course, there's this whole thing about being a student of knowledge, mm-hmm. right? And everyone needs to be a student of knowledge, mm-hmm. right? Now, am I correct in saying mm-hmm. that student of knowledge, firstly, yeah, not everyone's going to be a, no, sorry, not, not a student of knowledge, is there levels to it? That's my yeah. question, right? Yeah. Is there levels to being a student of yeah. knowledge? And obviously, you mentioned part time, if you got 24 hours, you use one, one hour, right, mm-hmm. to do it. But can you label yourself? Label yourself for saying mm-hmm. uh, the shakh, this guy, he's a student of knowledge, even though he's seeking knowledge for an hour a day. Yeah. A lot of the people who identify themselves as students of knowledge are frauds, right? Fraudulent activity. Mm-hmm. Student of knowledge is someone who dedicates his time full time to ilm. It's not somebody, who, you know, that doesn't mean somebody is not a student of knowledge. Every single Muslim has to be seeking knowledge. Yeah. Right? But a student of knowledge who's on the road to becoming a scholar is someone who dedicates his night and day yeah. in ilm, or as much as he can. Everybody has different circumstances, but he makes it his career. Yeah, That's a real student of knowledge. Uh, part-time, this part-time thing is still important. That doesn't mean, you know, the person's not seeking knowledge. Yeah, But these, these titles, mm-hmm. these alqab, mm-hmm. are, you know, uh, the person is doing teski of themselves in a sense you know what i mean mm. uh, Allah says, do not you know praise yourselves you're nothing and you are nowhere near becoming a scholar yeah uh you're just starting out yeah, even yeah. if you've been in the game five ten years you're still a a dot in the ocean ilm is an ocean yeah. mm. it doesn't have an it doesn't have an ending and you barely You're, you're at the beginning of the of, of the ocean. Yeah. You're still at shore. What's that thing you mentioned yesterday? What you on the you on the menu? You know, yeah, if, yeah. You're not, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. That's it. A lot of people on the menu. They think they got a seat at the table. Yeah. Oh, me brother, you're still on the menu, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so people, you know, they actually think there's something. Yeah. And and and, and, and that's because the culture that we have uh, amongst us is uh there's so many things wrong with it mm. one is somebody who's never sought knowledge or just started seeking out knowledge but he's acting like he has the uh uh credentials to speak about many matters yeah, yeah. way above his head yeah right uh carries himself like a scholar carries himself like somebody who has a say that's the problem yeah. so what happens when people see that Everybody thinks they have a chance. Everybody mm. thinks they have. When in before, for you to even be given any type of, you had to go through the levels. Yeah. There's levels that you have to go through. Yeah. You got to start from the bottom. Yeah. Right. Just like a job, entry level, then mm. go up the ranks. Mm. This is everything in life. Mm. But unfortunately, we have people at the bottom of the bottom of the stairs, but they think they're on the top of the stairs. Mm. Right. They need to wake up. They're still in a dream. Mm. Subhanallah. Yeah, so that that's the problem that we have. So student of knowledge is a is something that is uh, something that is big. Yeah. And 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 somebody who's student of knowledge has to be studying for double digit hours. If you look into the biography of the scholars and how much time they put in, subhanallah. Yeah. And how much dedication. Yeah. Right. 
And that's why a lot of the people, you, you speak to them or students of knowledge, you ask them for the prerequisites of ilm, not even ilm itself. Yeah. Like, this is part of ilm, but it's more of a prerequisite. You ask him, where is he with the Quran? He doesn't have Quran memorized. That's a problem. Okay, where is he at with Arabic? He's still stuttering when it comes to Arabic. Okay, where is he with Nahu? He's still stuttering. He's still very bad in Nahu. Yeah. Where is he with Ulum al ala He's still studying. You haven't even done the prerequisites before the actual getting into knowledge. But then what happens is he gets into fiqh, tafsir, hadith, has a say, opinion on some of the issues that are, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's very embarrassing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And this, I think that in itself is something that anyone who is coming to the deen is to be very watchful mm -hmm. of. And like you mentioned, obviously, to really, really look at focusing on your heart, mm -hmm. you know, connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. and, and then also, you know, your ibadah, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that, that should keep you focused. And having a good guide will help you, inshallah ta'ala, and not to mm -hmm. get too ahead of yourself yeah. you know mm -hmm. you learn a couple you know uh, statements here and there you know a couple phrases here and there and uh, don't let it get to your head because knowledge mm -hmm. is meant to humble you yeah. you know knowledge is meant to humble you and um and it's, it's it's fair in saying that not everyone is going to aspire to be a sheikh you know like when you let's say you enter the dean and then you know you've got the zeal or whatever and you're working on yourself mm -hmm. and they say to yourself like you said like a revolving door in and out you know, you realize I'm not cut out for this. You know, I'm not cut out for this. I want to be mm -hmm. a, a worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have mm -hmm. a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but I can't be a scholar, I can't be a sheikh. Yeah. Right. So, my kind of what I'm leaning towards is what do these people do? Yeah. You know, what do these people do? They, maybe they got a past. Mm -hmm. You know, got a past. They're, gonna, they're trying to reinvent themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, and the, looking around, everyone who's, who's really in the religion is quote unquote practicing. Yeah. Is a quote unquote student yeah, of knowledge, yeah, yeah. you know. So, what do they do? Yeah, this is, this is a, it's a great observation. Um, first of all, we should all aspire to be scholars if we can. Mm -hmm. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, mm -hmm. It's one of the du'as of the uh, mm -hmm. Rahman. Yeah, the, the the slaves of the Rahman. Yeah. One of the du'as is, oh Allah, make us amongst the muttaqin imama, mm -hmm. imma. Yeah, you know, to become scholars. But then sometimes, not everybody ha is equipped to become a scholar. Yeah. Some people, they just lack the talent mm. in terms of memorization, in terms of understanding, in terms of just being quick with it. Mm -hmm. Some people, they lack the time. Some people, they lack the dedication. Mm. Some people, they're just too old. Some people, they just have too much responsibilities, whatever it may be. Yeah, yeah. And I would compare it to, you know, when a lot of young people, you ask them what do they want to become? They want to be a professional athlete. A hooper, yeah, a footballer. footballer. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, we yeah. say soccer player, whatever it may be. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Because we say footballer. I mean, we don't even use footballer for American football, but I mean, we get the point. Yeah. But then you realize towards the end of high school, even maybe the beginning of high school, yeah, I'm not gonna become an athlete. I'm nowhere near. Yeah. All right. And then life hits you. Mm, what if you it. still think you're gonna be a professional? You're living in a dream. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because to become a professional athlete that requires a lot of dedication, a lot of time in the gym, working on your skill, working on your, t you know, some of it is talent, sometimes just pure, yeah, pure talent, something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you. A lot of it is skill, yeah. being in the gym ever since you're young. You can still make it if you start, but you have to have the dedication. You have to work twice as hard if you start older. Yeah. Right? You got to watch your food. You got to be in the gym. Yeah. You can't be hanging around. You got to be training, you know, multiple double digit hours a day. Mm. You, you got to get your body moving. Ilm is the same thing. And that's for everything in life. But yeah. even more so ilm because it's the deen of Allah. Even more so. So if that's for dunya we matter, imagine for ilm. Mm. So a person, they have a midlife crisis. They realize a year or two years in, yo, I'm not going to make it. So some people, they think, oh, let me just fake it. Fake it till I make it. Yeah. And they actually think. Or some people, they fell off hard. Mm. You know, sometimes, you know, those people fell off hard. They realize what they are early on. And then they just think, oh. I haven't made it to a scholar. Let me just go back to what I was doing before. Yeah. And that's incorrect. You try to become a scholar to your best. And you say to yourself that. Yeah. And, and, and you try your best. And you don't let the shaitan get into your head. Yeah, yeah. But due to one reason or another, you just can't dedicate your time and the knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Focus on ibadah. Yeah. Focus on praying fajr every day at the masjid. Do it. Make up for that last time in ilm. Yeah. All right? Focus on your akhlaq. 
Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, you know, uh, it's not just about ilm. Yeah. That's why when Imam Malik said, هذا يفتح له في باب الصيام هذا يفتح له في باب الصدق Find your ibadah that you're good at and you could excel at and maybe this could be the thing that could enter you into Jannah. SubhanAllah. That's what you should look at but continue to seek knowledge. Don't remain ignorant. Yeah. Continue to seek knowledge but also find ibadah. So the problem is people, they realize they're not going to become a scholar and then they have this, you know, one foot in, one foot out. Mm. They act like they're a senior student of knowledge, a, senior, a scholar, and they give off that persona mm-hmm. and that's the way they carry themselves. And that's very dangerous because yeah. now you're lying to yourself, you're lying to the public. Allah almost done. Yeah. And you know, I, I remember that um, one of the mashaykh, he, he, um, he came in and he said to, mm-hmm. to us that some people, you know, it's, uh, they have a love for the, for the religion, mm-hmm. you know, love for the deen, and mm-hmm. they develop that when they start. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Quote, quote, practicing, mm-hmm. and you may not be a scholar, yeah. and you may not be a, a you know a teacher, mm-hmm. you may not be a public speaker, mm-hmm. but there's still there's still space to, mm-hmm. to do something, you know, like mm-hmm. you can do something, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's you know assisting in mm-hmm. in in setting up classes, you know, whether it's some sort of thing, and the thing I mentioned about reinventing yourself and kind of like people who do this, where you um you you you, you perhaps in the past. You know, when you were not on the dean and you come to the dean and you feel like reinventing yourself and, and leaving the past behind, not knowing that perhaps you have some transferable skills that you can use that could be, you know, could be used in the DAO or you can help in the DAO, you know. You know, yeah. brothers who, like, like us here, for example, me and you sitting and having this podcast, there's people who studied videography, mm. you know, and, and this can be used for both so, good and bad, you so, know. Mm-hmm. So it's to kind of like not let them feel like Hope is lost if you ain't if you're not gonna be a scholar. Yeah, do you know what I mean? There's yeah. something you can do. You can you can always do something. Yes, you know that's a great point. And uh, there's something else you mentioned about Zod. If we can come back to that, yeah, to follow that before I forget. But that's a great point because you know becoming a scholar, it, it, you know that's we all aspire yeah to reach that level. But it's also very dangerous mm-hmm. because you'll be held responsible. It may be a khair for you, Allah Adam. Yeah. Because if a scholar is not acting upon his knowledge, yeah. he's the first person to El Tara fire. Yeah. As the Prophet yeah. said in Sahih Muslim. Yeah. You you know, so maybe Allah will you know will uh, give you that test. SubhanAllah. But maybe in other facets of life you can help. Mm-hmm. That's why the ulama when they discuss khidmah, the concept of khidmah, all right, Imam Ghazali he mentions uh, become a scholar if not a seeker of knowledge if not a khadim li ahl al-ilm or become from ahl al-dunya yeah. this is a part of khidmah mm. for ilm and khidmah for the deen in general yeah. um, if you look into al-rabi' ibn Sulaiman al-muradi rahimahullah ta'ala one of the core students of al-shafi'i mm. he was a servant for al-shafi'i he used to serve him subhanallah and al-rabi' wasn't bright like al-muzani al-muzani is one of his other Top students. And Muzani was sharp, intelligent, bright. Shafi says, Lo nadar shaytan la ghalaba. If he debated shaytan, he would have defeated him. Shafi says, Al Muzani nalsir al madhabi. He will propagate my madhab. Oh. Rabi wasn't as bright as Al Muzani. Matter of fact, the Shafi he says, I used to preach to him uh, for a mas'ala, for him to understand a mas'ala. I used to repeat it to him for him to understand it 40 times. SubhanAllah. But a Shafi'i loved him. Mm. And he used to serve a Shafi'i. So maybe, and then he ended up becoming Rabi'i to Shafi'i. And he, the one who, narr- all the narrations of a Shafi'i, Rahimullah, we have it through by way of Rabi'i with Sulaiman al Muradi. Mostly speaking, as Al Bayhaqi, Rahimullah, mentions and others in, in other books. But look how he attained knowledge yeah. by being around knowledge. Yeah. So just because. And, and look, even though he, that that talent that he that he didn't have it was yeah. made up by just being around, you know, uh, it, like we have this mentality: oh, if, if the student of knowledge thing don't work out, let me go back to whatever I was doing before. Yeah, yeah. Let me just go back to you know, let me at least uh, take advantage of the dunya. Yeah, yeah. Right, and not not the good side of the dunya, no. the bad side of the dunya. Yeah. But being around will not only help your iman because you are who you surround yourself. 
So being around the masjid, helping out in the da'wah, uh, actually keeps you at bay. And you'll pick up knowledge here and there. Mm. And who knows? That knowledge you pick up here and there in the future, yeah. you might turn into a scholar. Allahu yeah, yeah. It, it might It might be possible. <laughs> or it might be possible that this allows you to, you know, uh, this allows you to uh, learn some more. So this is this is very important. And going back to the concept of zuhd, yeah. people don't understand what the concept of zuhd is. Zuhd is not staying in your home and not working. Yeah. Zuhd is not to remain, quote unquote, poor, right? Man is a fitna. Wealth is fitna. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, fitna, wa fitna tu ummati al -mal. Mm -hmm. every, every nation has a fitna, and the fitna of my ummah is wealth. Inna wa auladukum fitna. As Allah SWT says in the Quran, the wealth is a fitna. But it also can help with many matters. Yeah. Right? It also can help many matters. Uh, the person has to look at themselves. Does wealth take increase increase my man or decrease decrease my iman? If it decreases your iman, then don't put too much effort into gaining it. Yeah. All right. But it potentially increases your iman, like Sa'd ibn Ubadah radiallahu ta'ala and he used to make Allah so to make dua for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He used to say, uh, you know, for Allah to give him wealth because he cannot he doesn't have patience for something that is little. Mm. All right. So when they talk about the concept of zuhd, not caring about the dunya, you can only be a zahid if you have something. Mm -hmm. If you don't have anything, you're not a zahid. Mm. You're stuck. That's the only choice you have. Mm. Right? Yeah. You can be a zahid in the dunya if you have it, but you choose not to pursue it. Mm. You have it. Yeah. You know? So we have this concept, right? Uh, especially here in this country, from what I've seen, Allah Alam, yeah. maybe that's changing, right? Yeah. And that is, a person, he gets into the whole seeking knowledge, becomes practicing, leaves college, leaves university, leaves uh, working, leaves everything. Yeah. But then you see he's sleeping all morning. Mm -hmm. He might come to the masjid at Dhuhr or Asr. <laughs> was, was good. Drinking tea with the brothers, chilling. Might pick up a book or two, talking about different masail, what's going on. Drama is involved in all of these different matters. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So he's neither seeking knowledge, yeah. Neither is, and and he's not doing his job in the dunya. Subhanallah. He misses out on everything. Yeah. Keeping yourself busy builds character, mm -hmm. builds you know uh, discipline, yeah, and it builds consistency. Mm -hmm. Going to work, going to university, you have something to wake up every day, yeah. but you have nothing to wake up. You just sleep whenever you want. You have no schedule. First of all, you never get knowledge. And two, uh, your ibadah will be all over the place. Yeah. And that's why some of these people, their prayers are all over the place. So I think uh, this whole concept of zuhd is misunderstood. Yeah. Right? Zuhd does not mean not working, not doing anything. Yeah, yeah. Zuhd means, listen, this is not going into my heart. This doesn't phase me. I don't look at anything in dunya. My goal is the akhirah. Yeah. Right? Uh, Wallahu alam. And the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was working. He helped build the Prophet's masjid, right? The, the masjid Nabwi. Yeah. He helped. He was working. Abu Bakr was working. Umar was working. This man, come on, this is one of the wealthiest. Matter of fact, if you look at the majority of the 10 companions of the Prophet's Jannah, majority of them were not only wealthy, they, they used to work. Mm. It's not like they were just sitting around. Yes, some of the Sahaba were in the masjid. Yeah. And they weren't working. Yeah. But who were those guys? They were the scholars. Mm. They were the guys that dedicated day and night. Abu Huraira, mm. Ibn Umar, mm. these guys are beats. Mm. They're, they, they're untouchables. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But the rest of the Sahaba, they're doing their thing and they still come to the masjid and they learn. But then they go do what they have to do. Yeah. So everybody is so everybody is busy getting to work. Yeah. I'm at this idle stuff. Mm -hmm. In the name of student of knowledge, fraudulent activity. Mm -hmm. You're not a student of knowledge and you're wasting your time. Get off your bed, go to work. And if you have the talents, if you're really dedicated, man, go and seek knowledge the right way. Yeah. Go memorize the Quran. Go learn the Arabic language the proper way. Don't yeah. come at me, so, you know, speaking Arabic and, <laughs> and still stuttering and, yeah. you know, still struggling and making Nahu mistakes and yeah. saying, Inna alhamdulillah. And, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah. Like basic Nahu. Yeah, yeah. So, there's something that's very important. No, definitely, you know. And you know, um, most of the time, 
of, uh, it, it always go back, it goes back to, I guess, maybe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, you know, having that sense of self-evaluation, mm -hmm. you know, holding yourself accountable for mm -hmm. every kind of step, step and every kind of move you make and not maybe going like through the perception of people because mm -hmm. everyone knows themselves, right? Yes. You know yourself, everyone knows yourself and, and you know, like, whether you're doing something wrong or, or right, you know yourself what you're doing, you know, you know if this is an act or not, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, and that, 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 that we covered, you know. Now, sometimes when it comes to um, things that are around you as well that affect you, what I want to kind of touch upon is um, when you are learning the Dean, a lot of things are new, mm -hmm. right? A lot of things are new. And if you're not someone who's, who's properly seeking knowledge, mm -hmm. it, it might phase you, it might like throw you off. Mm -hmm. And uh, an example I want to give you, you know, and it's about um, uh, fiqh matters, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Let's say, for example, hypothetically speaking, a brother who just started his salah, you know, and the only salah he knows is the salah that was taught by his father, his uncle, mm -hmm. you know, and he goes to a masjid, he starts to attend the salawat in the masjid and, uh, and he's praying. And alhamdulillah, there's brothers who, you know, nasiha, you know, the, the deen is nasiha, we're going to tell our brother, this is not the way you pray, this is how you do it, you know, you, you're doing... Uh, uh, your hands are supposed to go somewhere else. This fiqh matters, right? And he says, okay, he takes that upon him, he changes himself. And then he goes to another masjid, you know? And they're telling him, no, this is not the way uh, you're praying differently. So everyone's kind of putting their um, uh, fiqh opinions on the person and he gets confused, right? With all these, because he's never understood it, he doesn't know what this is, you know? And um, how, how does a person like, like once they stop practicing how do they deal with this kind of stuff yeah so i mean this is a this is a mushkil actually this is a problem from time okay they say that allegedly ibn hazm rahimahullah yeah the, the great fifth century scholar he that's how he sought knowledge because mm. he you know he was a son of a minister well respected at the time he was an adib mm. very you know a great poet and and it was great in arabic literature but he wasn't really on the knowledge side of things. He was 26 years old. He entered a, masjid, a Shafi masjid and uh, after Asr. And uh, he sat down and they told him to pray two rakahs. And then he went to a Maliki masjid and he started praying two rakahs because he just learned, you know, that he should pray two rakahs when he enters the masjid. And then they told him, what are you doing? It's after Asr. You shouldn't pray, <laughs> you know. So then he's like, what is this? What is all these madhab and different opinions? So he started seeking knowledge and so he became one of the greatest scholars in history. SubhanAllah. Uh, although controversial. But <laughs> Ibn Hazm, rahimahullah, uh, nobody could deny his his amount of knowledge. So uh, it tells you this this always existed. But this is where the concept of, of a teacher comes in. Mm -hmm. Having a teacher from the get-go. Mm -hmm. When people from Musalleen, the congregates come and correct you, Right. First of all, they shouldn't be doing that. But a lot of times, because that a jab, because the, the, like for salah, for example, a lot of those opinions in salah is not correct and incorrect. Mm -hmm. It's falil wa mafloul, which is better to do. Mm -hmm. But the salah still is valid no matter what. Mm -hmm. Most mo most of these issues that we see in salah. Yeah, yeah. So wh why are you going out of your way to correct? He's just following one of the opinions. Mm -hmm. You know, people shouldn't be doing that. But you can't control that. Yeah. But, you know, that's how they are. But if the person is starting to learn the deen, right? He should refer back to his teacher. Mm. Whatever, however his teacher tells him to pray, pray that way. Yeah. Whatever school of thought he's on, pray, pray that way. Khalas, yani, yeah. It's very simple. It's not that, it's not that difficult. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. the problem is we have a lot of self-taught people. Nah, They're too arrogant to have a teacher. And if somebody is not willing to be humble to learn under a teacher, he will always remain ignorant to, for the rest of his life all right if uh, yani if you want to have knowledge and you want to have that honor you have to have humility mm. the says i was humble when i studied to the point that he would go to the house of uh one of the uh, companions uh, and uh he would knock on his door and he wouldn't open the he would open the door he was sleeping and he would wait in front of the door till morning and then he would say, Oh, cousin of the Prophet, I would have came to you. And he said, This is how we honor the people of knowledge. And this is Ibn Abbas. And look, years later, what happened? 
is Ibn Abbas's friends used to make fun of him. Look at this guy running around with a book and, you know, or with uh, utensils and trying to learn. Yeah. Actually, the scholars are here. You're not going to be anything. It's a problem. And look what he ended up becoming. Mm. All right. So you have to have uh, humility. Humility is very important. Humility starts with having a teacher. Mm. So when it comes to fiqh matters, right, uh, you know, it's very important that a person uh, go, learns from a teacher, yeah. learns from a certain tariqah. But if he starts learning from the souq, from the market and from the internet, what happens is he starts taking opinion here, opinion here. Yeah. He starts looking at the adillah, Quran and Sunnah, mm -hmm. all right, without the proper tools. Yeah. It doesn't have the proper tools. Yeah. It's a problematic. Uh, you don't know Arabic, so how you how you look how you talk about these issues? You don't even know Arabic, and in the case that you know Arabic, you don't know usul al fiqh. Mm. So how are you talking about these matters? Because usul al fiqh teaches you how to understand the Quran and the Sunnah. Yeah, yeah, that's how it is. So what ends up happening is they end up doing tilfiq. They end up makeshift madhab, makeshift opinions that nobody has ever said. Subhanallah. You know what I'm saying? For example. A person would, uh, for example, you would get married without a wali and without witnesses. You can get married without a wali according to the Hanifi mother. Mm -hmm. And you get married without witnesses uh, before the consummation of the marriage according to the Malikis. But nobody ever said you can do both. Yeah. The Jama'an, you can't do both. Yeah. By consensus, you can't do both. Yeah. You yeah. have to have the yeah, Hanifi. So this this is tilfiq now. You took one opinion from me, one opinion from here. Yeah, yeah. Or for example, in the case of wudu, mm -hmm. all right. Imagine wudu, you don't rub the water on your skin, which is the opinion of the Malikis, mm -hmm. all right. And you uh, don't make wudu off of um, uh, uh, yeah, touching a woman mm -hmm. without shawa. Yeah, yeah. Which is uh, wudu is wajib according to the Shafis. Yeah. Or for example, you. Um, uh, you make wudu using nabid, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, according to the Hanafis, this is allowed if you can't find water. Yeah, yeah. The majority they say you have to do tayammum. Yeah. Now you make this makeshift madhab. Yeah, right? yeah. Subhanallah. You made a makeshift madhab. You took an easy opinion uh, or or hard whatever opinion it is off each madhab. Yeah. But in this surah, this is not what. This is not wudu. Yeah, subhanallah. So you you now you now you made your own opinion you made up your own thing yeah and it causes problems and yeah. it all starts with being no. self-taught and this is not in our tradition yeah. our tradition is to take from a teacher right right this is just like the prophet took from jibreel yeah. And the Sahaba took from the Prophet and That's the awesome. Tabi'in took from the Sahaba until this day and it will continue. Yeah. So there's this effort of, you know, pushing, yeah, yeah. being self-taught, being all this. And this is completely self-taught. There's a time for it. But in the beginning, you need a teacher to mentor you. Yeah. So those issues, how do you how do you counter it? By having a teacher, teacher. and a mentor who will tell you what to do. Yeah. Exactly. And that teacher usually has teachers. Mm. And those teachers, perhaps their teachers are still alive. So it's a... Silsila. You yeah. can't break that silsila. You can't break that chain. Yeah. You know a chain? Yeah, yeah. It's connected. Mm. But then when you're by yourself, you're at the top of the pecking order. What happens? <laughs> you're standing by yourself. You just saw... Inna ma yakulu dhibu min al-ghanam al Yeah, it's a problem. A wolf eats a lone sheep. Yeah. It's a lot of... It's a problem. Mm -hmm. And you know now, like this whole concept of having a teacher, mm -hmm. you know, we talk, we've talked about the the person mm -hmm. who, who who's on, who's the... Mm -hmm newly practicing you know mm. or then someone who's mm. you know just mm. um starting to pray and mm. starting to seek knowledge mm. i want to talk about the other side now mm. in terms of the teacher yeah right in terms of their kind of way of mm. because look different people come to the religion in different ways yes you know different ways mm -hmm. it can be through many ways a lot of guys whomever he wills in different ways and the dua to the peop people who are calling you know to to the religion how how do they kind of attract people who may not necessarily have no interest in the religion although they're born muslim or maybe mm. they're not mm. right um but for now i want to focus on the people who were who were born muslim grew up in a family that was muslim mm -hmm. but of course the dunya is the main priority mm -hmm. 
you know, the dunya is the main priority. How do they get, how do the du'at and, 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 and organizations or, or the teachers or the mashaykh attract these people to the religion of Islam? You know, to, to start practicing. I think first it starts off with a person recognizing that the goal is for them to be saved in the akhirah. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people have are self-centered. It's all about me mm. and how many followers I have and mm. how many people I can attract. Blah, 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 all this clout. Yeah. Clout chasing. Clout chasing. Fame. Yeah. Wait, the people before us, they used to run away from fame. Mm. They want to benefit the people. They used to run away from fame because fame gets to you. Yeah. Shaitan plays with you. Yeah. So first, the person has to understand it's not about you. Mm. You're nothing. It's about yourself and get into the akhirah. Yeah. And everybody, you're going to be by yourself. Yeah. It's all about you. Tomorrow you're going to be, you were born alone, you'll die alone, you were resurrected alone. Yeah. It's not about you. So a lot of times, you know, in the West, when we're growing up, they teach us. It's about you. You're the man. You're this. You're going to do it. Individualism. Mm. Right? When it's never about you. Yeah. So that's the first thing a person needs to understand that the point is not numbers. Mm. It's not about the numbers. It's not about quantity. It's about quality. Yeah. And that's why for 13 years in Mecca, how many people the Prophet quote unquote yes. attract? <laughs> not many. Yeah. But then building quality, who came out of that joint, Abu Bakr and their Umar and their Uthman. Like, it's not by accident that the top 10 companions all were from Mecca, from the early ones. Because when quantity increases, quality definitely decreases right that's just that's just facts in life yeah right so it's about what it's about quality yeah so it's never about the numbers right and if you have true yaqeen and tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's not about the numbers because mm. we're one what are we 1.5 billion 1.7 billion yeah and what do we have to show for it 53 time. Muslim countries, large diasporas in Western countries and non-Muslim countries. What do we have to show for it? We're still, we're still, uh, you know, we have we're we're humiliating in front of the world. Yeah. We have no honor in the, in front of the world, even though we're deep. We're never this deep, right? Mm. Islam is on the verge of becoming the number one religion, and we're still not even like we're and we're the weakest ever. But when we were on top of the world, we weren't necessarily the most. So it's about quality. Mm. So that's the first thing the person has to understand. But in general, uh, you know, uh, we want a lot of people to be saved as well. Yeah. But the first, the person has to understand, listen, you're not the one. You're just passing the message. Yeah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who guides. Yeah. You yeah. know, and the best way is the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is with what? With character mm. and action. Mm. Actions speak louder than words. You see a person, he speaks, speaks, speaks. We're so what? It's all about speaking, speaking, speaking. Go, do, act. No, no, no. Time out. Hold your horses. But listen, let me see your fajr in the masjid. Hmm. Let me see your fajr at the masjid. Yeah. People see your fajr in the masjid. That, that's motivation. Yeah. People see your character. That's motivation. Yeah. You see your hirs, your, your, you know, you have this prudence to seek knowledge, determine ages. That's motivation. Yeah. Actions speak louder than words. Yeah. Right? And words help. But actions are more important. So I think we're so focused on speaking to others. Mm -hmm. Speaking, speaking. But a person, when he hears too much speech, he gets tired. Yeah. A person is affected a lot of times by the, you know, the aura, and the action. That's what they're affected by, not yeah. what is said. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, so I think we've been focused so much on speaking and wow and giving motivational talks and lectures and all of this. And look what we have to show for it. Yeah. One line for Fajr, two lines for Fajr. Few people that come for Fajr, and most of them are old heads yeah. that are at the tail end of their lives. Yeah. Right? Where, where's the where's the the strength of the Ummah? Where are they? Mm. And and this is something basic Salah, and let's not even get to the other Abu You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I think to do that is we have to have first we got to build in house, change the entire culture. Yeah. Right. And and focus on prayer, knowledge, and character, and these matters, and that will reciprocate. And it will spread wildfire mm. because this deen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will protect it. All right. If we truly follow the way it came down, and inshallah, it will spread.
No. And it will come back, as the Prophet Wasallam promised us. Islam is on the verge of returning. And people are going to jump on the bandwagon too late. Mm. Make sure you jump on it before it's too late. No. All right? <laughs> and we got to do that before, you know, uh, it's too late. No. Allah. And, and you know, um, going back to what you're saying about action. Mm. Here's a here's a here's a, here's one for you. Then, like the 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 caller, the da'i, the teacher, them, like there is this. I'm trying so hard to word this properly, right? Mm. Like the whole image of it, mm. the whole image of the esteemed, you know, the image of 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 the teacher, the image of the sheikh. Mm. Does that cut them off from trying to? I don't want to say mingle or, or chill mm. with like the general people. Because mm. look, how are you going to have access to, you know, you can correct me if I'm wrong, how are you going to have access to the character of this person, you know, if you don't spend time with them, yeah. you know, and, and, and does that mean does that the teacher goes to those places? Let's say, mm. for example, the teacher goes and sees um, the general people or is he somewhere you got to go mm. see the teacher? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I'm presuming most of the audiences, Western audience, yeah, yeah. specifically UK audience, yeah, because the answer will be different depending oh. on country, time, era, mm. and obviously we live at one time, so that's not an issue. But Muslim countries, this may not apply, or certain Muslim countries, not all Muslim countries. Yeah, yeah. I just want to answer to answer that question, Connor. What did the Prophet Sallam do? Because we're very similar. The Prophet Sallam was in a non-Muslim society. Yeah. We're in a non-Muslim society. Yeah. Prophet Sallam was a minority. We're a minority. Yeah. A lot of similarities. Yeah, yeah. How did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do it? Yes, did he sit down? Mm. Was he was he in his little house? Or was he actively recruiting? Mm. Was he actively going out, going to the chiefs of Quraysh, mm. going to them, yeah. debating with them, yeah. right? Arguing with them, yeah. trying to tell them, giving yeah. them hujjah, miracles. That's what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. He mingled with the people. Yeah. To the point that he and his companions were walking. They don't know who, where's the Prophet? SubhanAllah. Even Umar Khattab, when he was a Khalifa, they would come, where's the Khalifa? Mm. They can't tell. Mingle. Mm. Is, is, the Prophet Sallallahu he says, الَّذِي الَّذِي يُخَارِطُ النَّاسِ وَيَصْبِرْ عَلَىٰ ذَاهُمْ خَيْرٌ مِنَ الَّذِي يَعْتَزِلُهُمْ Right? The one who mingles with the people is better than the one who secludes himself. In times of fitan, we are ordered to seclude ourselves. Yeah. But when a person is a person of khair, knowledge and character, Right, and some people they appoint themselves as this. <laughs> you know, self. There's no such thing as self appointment. <laughs> yeah. If the teacher sees you muahal, qualified, then you go and you do it. But if the teacher doesn't see it, sit your, yeah. you know, sit yourself <laughs> down and go. You don't need to go be telling other people. You have khalal. Mm. You have gaping holes. Yeah. Right. Fix yourself first. But let's say the person, assuming that the person is ready, right. In these times in these countries, there's a lot of fitan. But the person has been, you know, for years, either been studying or perfecting his character, perfecting his ibadah. Now he can go on the offensive end and get people into the masjid. Yeah. Right? You can't seclude yourself. No. Yeah. And he, a lot of people, they say this uh, statement of Imam Malik, rahimahullah, knowledge is sat. You know, knowledge, you come, come to knowledge. Yeah. And knowledge doesn't come to you. Oh, Imam Malik said that in Medina. When everybody was quote unquote practicing, even though we don't like to use that word, but yeah. scholars, yeah, and students of knowledge everywhere, and third generation after the Prophet, so you nice. know, these are the ahfad of the Sahaba, yeah, and the great grandchildren and the grandchildren of the Sahaba. That's when he said it at that time when there's plenty of scholars, yeah, All right. So, uh, we have to actively go in and, 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 and try to tell the people and go into the people, and people will get affected by that. Yeah. Right? But with the condition that that person is ready himself. Some people, they're not ready. Yeah. As they say. Mm. He came a raisin before he became a grape. <laughs> right? Even though he's still a grape. Yes. You know? Uh, don't jump the ladder. Yeah. You know? Take it step by step. So that's one side of it. That's the general. In terms of what you said about how they, you know, obviously there's khawar al muru'a. That is matters of integrity, obviously. That 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 differs from country to country. Can't really talk about it because anybody could be watching. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing, and that is social media and platforms like this is our international platforms. Yeah. 
people just presume they're talking to the people that in their locality. Yeah. But you're talking to the world now. Yeah. And a person who was not practicing a year ago or just became a seeker of knowledge a couple months ago. Yeah. And posting something on social media. This is an international platform. Anybody could watch it. Anybody could be. So it's very, very dangerous. Yeah. So I can't get into the details of what integrity is. Yeah. There are general guidelines, yeah. but it differs from country to country. There are things that people who are respected don't do. People who respect they do. Yeah. And that changes over time. Yeah. Changes over time. Changes generation. Our generation, different previous generations. A lot of things, but general things. Yeah. That doesn't mean you sit and you close yourself and, you know, if unless the person feels that they are. They get, they're easily impressionable. Mm -hmm. They're easily influenced, mm -hmm. you know? Everybody gets influenced. Yeah. But some people, less, more, less than others. Yeah. Uh, Allah, Allah knows best. So, <laughs> Imam Bashir al-Ibrahimi, some of the scholars of the Jazair, he mentions that the, this false uh, uh, statement, yeah. right? Uh, or this false um, persona of, you know, the people of Ahlul Khair. And that is sitting at your homes. They say the, the, the scholars and the du'at are sitting in the masjid like the businessmen and entrepreneurs are sitting in their businesses, waiting for people to come. <laughs> if you're a businessman, right? And not to compare the deen to the business, even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did. Yeah. But you understand it's just BS. Yeah. If you're a businessman, right? Mm -hmm. Should I not tell you of a tijara? Yeah. That will save you from a, you know, a great punishment. But if you're a businessman and you're new, or nobody, a lot of people don't know you, do you just wait for customers to come, or do you actively do marketing? Yeah. You actively do marketing. Yeah. If you're big and you're strong, then you sit and let people come. Yeah, yeah. What are we? Hmm. We're minority. We're very little. We got to go out and try to show these people this Islam, this beauty that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given us. Exactly. All right. Yeah. And, and that doesn't mean we leave off the masjid. The masjid is very important because there is a call to cut off masjids and a call to third spaces and all this. Right. Some people, their intentions are good. Some people, their intentions are evil. But a masjid is a core part of the, of the religion. No. All right. This is where ilm is. This is where the Quran is memorized. The sunnah is preserved. All right. Where the circles of knowledge happen and will be until the day of judgment. That will not stop. Yeah. All right. People are trying to prevent this. But that doesn't mean that's the only thing that should be going on. Mm. Uh, Allah and Allah knows best. <laughs> and everybody has different talents, different yeah. skills. Some people are better at this, some people are better than that. The point is, don't think that this is it. Yeah. Allah alam, it's the mentality. Mm. Allah knows best. Allah, it's been uh, very uh, beneficial. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil mm. Alameen. I, mm. I thank you for coming. You know, you came yeah. a long way, mashallah. Sure, man. Like, well, you man. know, as they say, over the pond. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, to come and to visit us here, mm. you know, mm. and to talk about topics like this, like, uh, you know, we say on this podcast, you know, we, mm. we want to talk about things that are relevant to the viewer. Yeah. And this is, mm. this is really, really relevant, you know. And Allah knows best, man. Mm. Uh, I'd like to thank you for coming. Jazakallah mm. khair. May Allah reward you and Mm. And give you a istiqamah, mm. you know, and, and, and mm. bless you. And uh, inshallah, we'll us. see you soon. All of us, inshallah. Uh, I mean, I mean, Allah protect us in this dunya and the akhirah. I mean, may Allah grant us paradise. I mean, inshallah. Ya muqallib al qulubi thabbit qulubin ala dinik. I mean, ya Allah. Because our hearts could turn at any time. Sah, so may Allah give us a uh, tathbit of the deen. I mean, Allah give us istiqamah, as you said. I mean, and uh, may Allah make us amongst the righteous. Allahumma, I mean, who are with the prophets and the salihin. I mean, uh, and the martyrs. Wa hasuna ulaik rafiqah. Inshallah, yeah, um, we'll end the podcast there. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi. I thank uh, Sheikh Abdullah for being with us here. It's been an absolute blessing. Um, for those who are watching online, I hope you've you've have benefited. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment below. Maybe you want to hear something uh, in the next podcast. Until next time, I've been Muhammad Basaid, and this has been Beyond the Member. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika shalwa la ilaha illa anta astaghfirullah tuwbalek. Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.